Can we please sit, um, take our seat? Thank you very much. All right, we've gone live now on June 4 TV2. So please, um, you could share the link. The link is on the website of um, in memory of kojoyanka.com. So if you get there, share the link. You are live on YouTube now. Thanks very much. We want to have our second Bible reading to be done by Mr. Daro Yanka. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean on all your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together. This gentleman is carrying a lot on his shoulders. God bless you. Thank you very much. Can we please be upstanding once again? We do our next hymn. Ladies and gentlemen, say, take my life and let it be. Reverend Esther. You 
Thank you very much, Reverend Esther, once again. Can we please take our seat, ladies and gentlemen? Our next Bible reading will be done by Auntie Esme. Please, if you could put your hands together, let's make a welcome. She's been there for this family through difficult times. First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind, who has rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left unto the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who are falling asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, I encourage one another with these words. Amen. 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 Please put your hands together once again, ladies and gentlemen. We are just in a church setting up atmosphere, so we clap our hands, we stand up, we sit down, we stand up, we sit down. Can we please be abstaining as we do our next hymn that is going to be led by Reverend Nana Dako. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasant I the court above in the land of light, your love, pleasant are thy courts below. In this land of sin and woe, all my spirit longs and faith for the Thy saint for thy brightness of thy face for thy fullness God of grace happy birth the sing and fly round thy altars O most high have your souls that find a rest in a heavenly Father's breast. Like the wandering doves that fall, no repose on earth around. They come to and enjoy it ever then. Happy souls, their praises flow, even in this veil of war, waters in the desert rise, man of fear from the skies on they go from strand to strand till they reach thy throne at land thy thy feet at all and fall who has led them say through all Lord be to win, guide me through a world 
of sin. Keep me by thy safe and grace. Give me at thy side a place. Sun and shield alive thou art. Guide and guide my erring heart. Who raise and glue reflow from thee. very much Reverend Anadakon. Please take your seat ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much. For those of you who have just come in, if you don't have the program, it's on the website of inmemoryofkojoyanka.com. If you go on the website, the program is there, the order of service, as well as the hymns that we are singing, is on there. It's got photo galleries, it's got a place that you can leave messages for the family. So please do that if you haven't done it as well. We have got to one of the most important parts of this program and uh, it is the reading of the biography of our dear brother, a husband, a friend and many of you who might have known him, Kujo is meticulous with his things, he is excellent in academic endeavors. So this is one biography that you need to pay attention even if it's going to take us one hour to finish this. I will plead with you to pay attention and listen to it. Let's put our hands together as we make welcome Mr. Jojo Blancin, a very close business partner, a friend of Kojo Yanka, to read the biography for us. Thank you very much, Michael. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Most of us probably know Kojo in part as um, his journey of life has unfolded. Um, Shimat and the family have asked me to read a short, short biography of Kojo Yanka. Hopefully it will help all of us to um, fill in the gaps and get a good idea of the man we are all here for. In loving memory of Robert, Kojo Yanka, a life of submission to the Lord, service, wisdom, and inspiration, 1997 to 2003. On December 16, 2023, the world witnessed the departure of a remarkable soul, Robert Kojo Yanka, aged 46. Born in Cape Coast, Ghana, on the 13th of June, 1977, to Mr. Kweku Isuman and Mami Ajwebifi, both of blessed memory. He was the fifth born of six children. Kuju's life was a testament to academic excellence, unwavering commitment, and a profound dedication to service. A life which carved profound, wholesome relationships First to God, then friends, family and friends, colleagues and political acquaintances. Robert's educational journey began in Cape Coast, where he attended University Primary and Zion schools before heading to Agri Memorial Secondary School for his GCSEs, O and A levels. His charms were evidently glaring even at this early stage of his life as he managed to sweep a pretty, young, impressionable Miss Boche off her feet. The magic and connection between Kojo and Shima stood the test of life and time. 
until his departure to the heavens in the early hours of 16th December 2023. For his further education, Kojo attended University of Ghana, Ego, where he obtained a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Politics and Philosophy, with first-class honors, of course. Embracing his civic duty, Robert undertook his national service at the Electoral Commission in Cape Coast, laying the foundation for a career marked by integrity, service, and commitment. Later, he furthered his education with a master's degree in policy and administration from Queen Mary's University and a postgraduate certificate in education, PGCE from Canterbury Christ Church University. After graduating from the University of Ghana, he joined Shimad in the UK. Soon after, they were blessed with their first child, Darrell, in May 2002, who was born at Edmonton Middlesex Hospital. And a year later, on December 20th, 2003, they tied a knot at the Mountain Calvary Cross Ministry. Their union was further blessed with two other beautiful children, Shaila, born in September 2006, and Asha, April 2013 was born in Chase Farm Hospital in Enfield. Renowned for his honesty, respectfulness and wisdom, Robert's strong faith was evident in his devout relationship with Christ, using scripture both in every conversation and in how he dealt with all the people around him. His profound love and submission to God led him to the church without fail. He was always in church. Doesn't matter what we do, Saturday night, Friday night, Sunday morning, 7 a.m., 7 a.m., he's in church and he'll match the whole family there. He built strong connections throughout his life with churches such as ICGC Dreamgate, where I met Kojo over 20 years ago. Action Chapel, both in Ghana and the UK, Jubilee Church in the UK, and Empowerment Worship Centre in Ghana. Each church played a pivotal role in the different seasons God led him, God led him through throughout his time on earth. While in the UK, Kujo worked with various organizations, first working as a sales executive with T-Mobile, and then Phones for You, then years after as a warrant officer for EDF and PowerGen in London. Furthermore, he lectured at both Enfield College and London Business School, as well as working in early years foundation for children at Carter Hatch Primary School. He was also a policy officer at Greater London Volunteering and lecturer at City of London Business College. Further roles included working with Barra Dry Cleaners in Wokingham and later Blankson's Limited with his friend and brother Jojo, where Kojo became a director and a partner. In recent years, one of his pride and joys was farming. And as a partner at Jinyame Farmstead, he broadened his horizons, engaging in pineapple and cassava farming in central and eastern regions of Ghana. But perhaps the crown in his jewels endeavors his significant role in setting up and aiding in steering the affairs of the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, GIADEC. If you haven't heard Gadek before, I encourage you, go find out, read about it. This will make all the difference to Ghana and hopefully to Africa. As head of the CEO's office and director of communications at Gadek, Kojo flew from the UK to Ghana to build the very foundations of this enterprise. He studied everything there is to know about the whole value chain from mining bauxite, 
refinery and smelting of aluminium or alumina. He could talk to anyone on any aspect of the great pace setting way of handling the natural resources of Ghana. He was convinced this will become the blueprint for handling Africa's natural resources. And as usual, could you pursue this wholeheartedly? The successes currently unfolding will make him very, very proud. And indeed, the entire family is proud of him and his legacy. If you didn't know, the president just launched another phase of this process, I think it was last week or the week before, and uh, he was involved in organizing and pulling all of that together. Unfortunately, he was not here to witness it. Regarding interest, could you love crime and investigative documentaries? His curiosity of human behavior never ceased. He would often spend evenings and weekends watching these documentaries. He was also an avid listener of LBC radio and international news channels, even whilst in Ghana. Politics was his passion, but more importantly, he took pride in the everyday gaining of knowledge. He was also fanatic about health and fitness and was in the gym most mornings. Most of you might have seen one or two of his sessions in the gym in various channels. Like most, he began for aesthetic purposes but continued to the mental, due to the mental and spiritual benefits it provided. Could you often listen to sermons, spiritual books, teachings, every single time he went to the gym. You always find him with his headphones. I've been with him oftentimes, and you can't even talk to him because he's in a different place. He often spent time in prayer and with himself. For him, it was less about lifting metals, as he used to say, but reflection and learning. His interests were wide and varied, including tennis and football. He was an Arsenal fan, so they're not Londoners. He took pleasure in listening to jazz, classical music, Ghanaian high life classics. He was a good friend of Kofi Kinata, and he would get to the floor anytime Kofi Kinata came on the scene. He loved hanging out with his close friends, but in his latter years, found fulfillment in hanging out with himself. He recognized the importance of loving thyself as a man in order to love others effectively, which is evident in the upbringing of his children. Active in politics, Robert was a staunch member of the New Patriotic Party, and in particular, NPP, UK, contributing to various wings such as the Youth and the Young Executive Forum, YEF. He was, the trust, he was the trusted master of ceremony at most of their programs across the UK. Shimat and Kojo opened their home to the NPP UK regularly for meetings, get-togethers, strategy sessions, and it is where the modern NPP UK Youth Wing started. That started in his home. I was there that day. Anybody who wants to challenge that can talk to me. He co-authored the insightful book, No Prices for Runners Up, with his friend and brother, Doji. I'm sure most of you know and would have met Doji if you know Kujo, wherever he is, Doji. Is wherever Doji is, more than likely you find Kojo as well. That's the man and the kind of commitment and relationships uh, he built. Adding to his voice, adding his voice to critical discussions 
and strategies for electioneering. That's, that was the purpose of the book, No Prices for Runners Up. Could use influential support and mentorship extended beyond his own political endeavors as he tirelessly assisted numerous individuals in achieving their political ambitions both in Ghana and in the UK. Through guidance and all political practical assistance, Kojo played an instrumental role in nurturing the aspirations of aspiring politicians, empowering them to make meaningful contributions to their communities. His impactful support have borne fruit in the form of numerous individuals ascending to significant political positions. Among those he guided and assisted, several have risen to become ministers of state, members of parliament, party executives, and even the legal counsel to the president. He literally picked that young man off of Facebook and held his hand into politics. His commitment to nurturing political talent and providing practical support has not only shaped the trajectories of individual careers, but also contributed to the strength and diversity of political leadership in Ghana and the UK. But for those who truly know, knew him, his impact in this life went deeper and beyond the surface. These are some of the little things he did that embodied the love of Christ that he believed in. Kujo was the type of uncle to be the first one to take you on the motorway for the first time if you're learning to drive. What an uncle to have. Kujo was the type of friend that would invest prayer, wisdom and effort into your pursuit of a job. He would pursue it like it was his own endeavor. Kujo was a type of brother that would pay the school fees of nephews and nieces whilst looking after his own family. Kujo was a type to put a smile on your face when you've lost hope of any joy in any particular day or time. If you met Kujo, he can lift your spirit up. He will have a scripture for you. He will have some wisdom to share with you. Kujo was the type of man to sit a young couple down and guide them through their marriage step by step with advice the Lord blessed him with through his own experiences. Kujo was the type of father to work tire tirelessly at two jobs just so his child or children can have the opportunity to attend extra classes or play an instrument like the other kids did or attend trips, school trips, so their child or children will not feel left out. Kujo was a type of husband to abstain from food for spiritual purposes every Wednesday without fail with regards to praying for a wife's pregnancy. He was ruthless with his selflessness and always believed and said, everywhere I go, I will leave my behind there. He always said that. He made a mark wherever he went. Beyond his professional endeavors, Robert's greatest joy was his family. He leaves behind a devoted wife and three children whose lives were enriched by his boundless love and guidance. His utmost impact is one that is known by many, but appreciated more now that, than ever. And that was his outlook on life. Could you describe himself not as a Christian, but as a follower of Christ? And believe that every action performed should glorify our Lord and exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. The seed of this seed of understanding bears coats and gems of wisdom he used to live in different areas of life. 
And one of these, one of those areas was his family group, their group chat, where he would post several devotionals to guide the path of his wife and children for many years. The last one he left, the last one he posted was on the 7th of December, 2023. And it goes as follows. We have two lives. And the second begins when you realize we only have one. Think about it. In other words, suffering is necessary until you realize it's unnecessary. So, Robert Kujoyanka's legacy is one of academic excellence, unwavering commitment to service, and deep love for his family, and most importantly, submission to the Lord. Though he may no longer walk amongst us, his spirit dwells with us. He will continue to inspire all who had the privilege of knowing him. He lived a short but a full and meaningful life and completed the, the task that he was assigned by the Lord. Again, for those who knew him, when you greeted Kojo with a hello and a how are you, his reply often was calm and faith-filled. Mercy is keeping us. Elohim is our helper. During this time, mercy shall keep us indeed. Elohim will help us all. Long may your impact continue with all of us. Goodbye for now and rest well in eternal peace. You have surely done your bid, could you? Day. Thank you. Wow, please put your hands together once again for Mr. Jojo Blanksen. You've read this very, very nice and softly. I couldn't even believe the length of time that it took you, but we thank God for the life of Mr. Kojo Yanka. I have MC program with Kojo. I've done so many things. I've DJ for him in his house done so many things together. He always meets me and he said, Mr. Kansi, or a lot of times he tell you, no more titan. That is how he is. And I said, Mr. Yaka, Charlie Yesheho. There is always something unique about Kojo whenever you meet him. If you don't talk, if it's politics, he will talk to you. If it is sports, he will talk to you, whatever it is you meet him. The man has knowledge of everything. I remember when Asna was going down the train, he would meet after church service in Maida and he said, Mr. Kansi, this is in literally meaning, Mr. Kansi, what is wrong with your team, Asna? Do they want to kill me? Well, this is the man, he loves his football been to Emirates a couple of times to watch football. But we thank God for his life. We want to have a solo ministration now by Reverend Esther. A special dedication to the missus. Smart Yanka. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we make welcome Reverend Esther Owusu to minister the song when the ocean dries and thunders so thank you hallelujah david said and when my heart is overwhelmed you lead me to that rock that is higher than i i will be still and know that you are god the god of jacob is our refuge
Very much. Yes, you've done the right thing, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together once again for Reverend Esther. God bless you. We will be still and we will know that indeed you are God. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's another phase that we've got to now where we're going to be reading a tribute from the wife, Mrs. Smart Yanka as well as from the children. So if you could have your attention, the one for the wife is gonna be read by Auntie Namojo, and then the children will come up to read their tribute after that. Thank you. Thank you. Tribute by Mrs. Shimat Na Ukankai Yanka. It's been two decades of bliss building a life together, filled with laughter, love, and countless memories. 
1995, when our paths crossed at Agri Memorial Secondary School, we knew we were meant to embark on this incredible journey together, side by side. Your unwavering support, understanding and love made these 20 years an extraordinary adventure that I wouldn't trade for anything. My love, I really miss you. A day never went by without you telling a joke, explaining a Bible verse, teaching, directing or uplifting us. Even though God called you back four days before our 20th wedding anniversary, I believe the angels are happy to have you. In the midst of our disagreements, you would always tell me, baby, God exclusively made us for each other. I have nowhere else to go. It is only death that will separate us. But until that time comes, we are in this together. The same God that made us for each other is the same God that has given me divine strength to get through this very difficult time. I know God will see me and our children through. I miss the phone calls of you immediately saying, baby Otteden, meaning how are you? I will respond with a regular nyaminado, meaning by God's grace. Our conversations were about life and mostly our children. How will you walk your only princess Shaila down the aisle on her wedding day? Difficult as it is, I know you are in a better place. You took pride in the Yanka name and was proud to be the head of the family. You made an effort to give our children a loving life that glorified the way of Christ. It was not the extravagant things but the little gestures you did that made you the great father you were such as changing your work hours to be able to pick our children from school and implementing Friday movie nights. We couldn't go to the cinema often because you would always fall asleep. You were a father who loved his family dearly and I thank God and love you for that. This is why, Kojo, it is so painful going through the messages on the family group chat. The jokes, the pieces of advice, encouragement, and the everyday reminders from you to always be grateful to God and for life. Your goal was to one day become the Vice President of Ghana and make it a better country, prioritizing the needs of the Ghanaian. Your fervent prayer was that God would place you in a position where you would influence the youth and that was your passion. However, you have left a legacy from the impact you made and the wisdom received by all who came into contact with you. These 46 years you lived were incredible years likened to that lived by a 90-year-old man. You have positively influenced so many lives and above all, you have demonstrated to our children the right path to follow Christ and nothing else. You may be gone, but I can still see your face and hear your laughter as if you were stood right next to me. I cannot express the void I feel every single day. I've been left feeling really empty. I will forever cherish you, my love. My boy, I'm really missing your absence. Kojo, I miss you. I wish this was all a dream, but it is reality which is hitting me so hard. I miss my bunch of flowers every year of our wedding anniversary. I miss you, my dear husband. Here is to many more years sharing endless dreams. Till we meet again, baby. Rest well. Much love, your dear wife. Shimad. Thank you. Thank you very much, Auntie Namucho.
Can we please put our hands together as we welcome the children? Daryl, Shaila, and Asha. Shall is tribute to that. My dad, what a man. One of the most, all the most wisest men I knew. The things he would say blew my mind. How can someone have such understanding and revelation about the mysteries of life? All our texts looked, all our texts looked, sorry. All our texts looked like, Dad, we're gonna top up my account. Dad, when are you gonna send me money? Or an I love you gift. Yet when we were in the same room, there was no words. We would just sit there, but that alone was enough. It was as if no time had passed. He was the kind of person who had no intim an intimidating face, yet a welcoming presence. He had a way of intentionally acting intimidating with direct questions or telling you what you needed to hear. The memory I remember is I did bad in my mocks and he gave me a good scolding. It was the first time I was speechless. Didn't know what to say. But the next morning he called me saying it was only because he knew my potential. From then, every day he would pray for me before my exams. He would say things like, trust Jesus or Elohim is our help. When I was transitioning into sixth form, I remember it was a school break and he said to me, Shala, if you're talking to anyone, you should tell me. And I laughed. He said you go to sick form, so guys would start approaching me. And I just said, okay. The reason why I know what a true man of God looks like is because of who the man my dad was. Even watching the way my older brother is is due to the way my dad was. The level of godly wisdom he imparted onto me that I'm still coming to understand is one of the things that I thank God for. I remember we would have conversations and when I understood what he was talking about, we would bounce off each other. Because of his obedience, the Lord always spoke for him. One lesson I was taught was trust God and do good. Psalm 37 verse 3. Dad always emphasized the importance of being an active follower of Christ. His fruit were evidence of that. To conclude, I thank the Lord so much, so, so much for choosing him to be my dad. That what he couldn't teach me, the Father is now teaching me. His life is the purpose that did not just fit himself or family, but to what God ordained. Nothing was ever wasted. We have gladly been able to inherit the wisdom he passed on, just like the descendants of Abraham. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet of the nations. Amen. Dad, that's what I usually called him. My first memory with Dad is when he did a live on Facebook with his best friend, uh, Uncle Dozzy. He said about live about a hundred times. And also, when we went to, to a Chinese restaurant, he didn't know you, you had to reserve seats. So, so he joked around with the waiter for a bit to get some seats. I feel sad about this hardworking man's passing. He's been with me for as long as he can. And I try not to think about it too much, but, but the lessons I learned from my, my dad is that he told me to never be angry or I will regret it later in life. And he told me to do my best in school uh, and, I, and it will pay off. So what I've said that is that daddy helped me for the last 10 years of my life. He always reminded me that God is with you and, and never think he's not. Finally, another lesson he taught me was when I was in Ghana the, the, the summer. He taught me a valuable lesson. To, uh, he taught me a valuable lesson. Um, of how, don't care about how people see you, only care about 
at how you see me. Goodbye, daddy, for, for now, daddy. I, I will make you proud and I'll do it all for you. This is Daryl's tribute to them. When there was a problem I had, a decision I had to make, or an obstacle in my life, I would pray to the Lord to give, the wisdom and, to give me wisdom and courage. It was no surprise that almost every single time that wisdom and encouragement came through my father. Dad was a good man. He loved his family and went beyond to love and care for us. We didn't grow up with much, however, it never felt that way. Along with mommy, he made it feel like we were the luckiest kids in the world. He would work tirelessly two jobs at a time, maybe three, so that I could learn an instrument in school, go to extra classes, or play rugby for a team outside of school. It's not until I had to start dealing with money myself, I realized just how much he sacrificed. Dad was a heartfelt person. His heart beat for humanity. He truly demonstrated to me what a lot of men struggle with in this day and age, and that was true vulnerability. He was an honest father. Made known to me his mistakes, his trials and walk of faith, but also taught me what he learned from him. And through his honesty and vulnerability, also stemmed on judgment. Like not many children, I felt more comfortable expressing my sins and faults to my dad than my own friends. I'll never forget the day when my father said passionately, Kweku, if you were a child for murder, I'll still call you my son. His non-judgment was evident. Therefore, I went to him for everything in my life. Every struggle I had or question I flooded my mental, I would seek his counsel. And oh boy, in doing that, the amount of bullets that missed me, just from following my father's counsel, which I thank God so daily for. My dad was the type of father that provided wisdom and insight of life. For many years, he reminded me, us even, that his father died when he was 15. His parents spoke no word of English, yet he made something of himself. I didn't have to go and look at sad stories online or hear people's testimonies in order to gain hope. I lived with a constant reminder of the goodness of the Lord. I was related to it. Due to the capacity of my father's faith, by the grace of God, I've inherited it. My dad sacrificed self for us. During my mother's pregnancy with me, every scan that my parents attended displayed that I had a hole in my heart. During the pregnancy, my father fasted every Wednesday, trusting in the Lord for something to be done. It was no coincidence that on the 29th of May 2002, which was a Wednesday, I was birthed perfectly fine. My dad humbled himself to the Lord for the family, took upon himself to make a change, and that's what he was, change. The wisdom he blessed me, the wisdom he was blessed with, and word of knowledge was so different to the thinking of the world. It was almost like he was a stoic, some called him wise and some called him delusional. In the midst of the conversation, it never clicked with you his understanding of deeper topics surrounding life. Until you went away and realized what he explained was not of the mind, but of spirit. My dad for many years ventured into a podcast where he gave advice on love and relationships and the biblical way of dealing with marriage. Dad recorded this every Saturday for over three years. One of my favorite nuggets goes as follows. It takes effort to identify affection. Salah. It's not always what you did wrong that hurts the relationship, but sometimes what you didn't do right. Watch this. David won the war at the expense of his family. Get the balance right. Simple words, yet so profound. He wasn't always a serious dog. In his younger years, he loved a good boogie. He was a definition of somebody who could not give an ounce of care of what anybody thought about him. He would laugh the way he wanted to laugh, dance the way he wanted to dance, even if it was offbeat and very horrendous, and wear what he wanted to wear. And if you knew my dad, he had some interesting pieces of clothing. I guess because he was a loyal Zara buyer. He loved the Zara cell, like he loved the Zara cell. He would walk into, we would walk into Zara and we would see something that he liked, and he expressed his admiration of the item very clearly but he would walk out empty-handed. And I used to ask him, why don't you get the shirt? And he would say, they'll reduce it in January. <laughs> Meanwhile, we were in mid-April. He would not pay for anything unless it was on sale. 
I remember when I noticed he had two pairs of the same shoe. And I asked, why is that? He said, the second pair was on sale, so I bought it. And I said to him, we already have one. But he replied, it was on sale, so I bought it. It was like the fact that it was on sale made the new shoe look better than the previous one, even though they were identical. But what was so great about him is that he did not even care. Even what his own family thought about him sometimes. No one made me laugh as much as he did. His jokes were very fatherly, but how funny he thought he was also convinced you that he was funny. Therefore, you laughed as well as much as he did. However, he was also so blunt as well. I remember one time a friend came to me for relationship advice and I asked my dad what I should say. Before finishing my explanation of the situation, my dad already assumed that I had given the advice. And he said laughingly, why did you give the advice? You're not in a relationship, you're single. Ouch, dad. I said that I know, I didn't say give any advice. I was expecting a sorry, but instead I got a, okay, good. My dad paid attention to me. He knew, better than my, he knew me better than myself because he was me at one point in life. When I tell people who I work in film and media, they always ask, how do your parents feel about it, assuming, them, assuming that them being African has a part to play. But what not many people know is that my dad got me into film. He noticed I liked storytelling from a young age, but didn't like reading, as I used to pretend to read the books my parents spent much money on. He knew me truly, and to be honest, he was the one, the only one, that fully understood me in this life. It got to a point where our relationship was no longer a father or son relationship, but deeper than that. We began to understand that we were both children of God first, and happened so to be Kudro, was designed to be my, my, my father, Daryl's father, and Daryl was assigned to be the firstborn to Kojo. Then we recognized in what way then can the glory of God be displayed in this union. Thus we start to see each other as fellow spirits. Our conversations were like breaths of fresh air, spirit-led and scripture-filled. We would celebrate our successes and admit our wrongs and guided each other to be better followers of Christ. And our relationship became that simple for what I would say was the last three years before God called it back. However, it got to a point where my father was too good to be true. A definite solution to my problems, whether spiritually, mentally, financially, was just a call away. My dad was almost like an angel in my life. This was a clear indicator to me his assignment on earth was near completion. From the age of 16, my dad would say, Kweku, you need to start doing this because there'll be a time when I'm not here anymore. My dad raised me not just to be a good child, but a good future husband, a good father and a good brother. It was like he knew he was going to. But to be honest, I had that feeling also. Because he was like no other person, the peace of God was in his life. I love my dad. Without him, I actually couldn't imagine who I'd be today. Do I want to know why God called him back? To be honest, I don't really. I was taught it's the will of God above anything else and not my own. My dad imparted wisdom onto me like a pouring of oil into a lantern. And by the grace of God, my cup is full for this time. In Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I find myself feeling this peace that I know is from God. I find myself going deep enough to a place where there is no death. I realize if I react to death with my flesh, with my form, it's a dreadful thing. But on the level of the formless in spirit, it's a sacred thing. First Thessalonians 4 verse 13 to 14. And now dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who died. Like I mentioned before, I began to have a spiritual relationship with my dad. A relationship that continues even to this moment. Seeing our relationship as a decision by God rather than coincidence. The father decided to put two sons together. And as a result, I don't feel lost, but insight into the plans of God and gratitude and the inspiration for the life my dad lived. I think I would have felt lost if I knew he wasn't right with Christ. 
If that was the case, then he would have truly perished. But by the grace of God, he hasn't. So let me remind you all, before we are flesh, we are spirit. Dad is not gone. He's not limited to his form. So now he can help, guide, make laugh, and spread wisdom to us all in many other ways. To conclude, I'd like to thank everyone for their support. I and my family are, I and my family are daily grateful. But one more favor I ask of everyone is this. Please learn to love God, love yourself, and love others. It is through Jesus we can exhibit the love my dad shared and imparted the wisdom he had. Only through Jesus, everything is conquered and through the embrace of his sacrifice, you begin to realize that not even death can kill you. Thank you, dad. See you soon. Talk to you later. Thank you very much. That was a beautiful tribute from the children of Mr. Kujo Yanka. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've just arrived in here and you don't have any of the program, the program is um, the website in memory of kujoyanka.com. You've got an order of service there, everything is there. If somebody is sitting by you who has the program, the paper program, um, there's a QR code at the back of it. Just scan that QR code and it will take you to the website and you can follow the program from there and also leave your messages for the family who will be reading it after the burial, after everything. They need your prayer, they need your support, they need your strength. Thanks once again, we want to go into some ministration. Can we please put our hands together as we welcome Mrs. Rita Mann, please. I can hear your clapping, ladies and gentlemen. May your soul rest in peace, God. This is a song from the children to their dad. For always been my own, for guiding me through troubles and the joys. I promise you, even though you have crossed over, that I why your memory lives on. Thank you, Dad, for always being my hero, for guiding me through troubles and the joy. I promise you, even though that I will smile where your memory lives on because you raised me up so I can stand on mountains you raised me up to walk on stormy seas Because I had your love, you raised 
in me. Please don't go, Richard. Uh, I want you to do one song in town for Smart and the family. If you could do Kashi B for me, please. Yeah? Thank you. Kashi B. Don't be afraid, I am with you. Kashebi is in me, Kebuyo, Smart Nine, Okanka, Yanka, it is well. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any seat by you that is not occupied, can you please signal so that some people can get a seat? If there is a seat by you and there's nobody on, please, if you let them raise your hand up and the ushers will direct somebody over there thanks very much we've got to one of the very important part of our program this evening and that is a sermon for this evening and this is one bishop that for whatever reason i don't know why but could you never call him a bishop he said dead bishop i don't know why it's only Kojo and Doji who calls him by that, by the Bishop. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as a big welcome, Bishop Dr. Ben Sala.
Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Almighty God, we thank you. For the life of Kojo, we give you praise. For the blessing he was, the love we shared, the sweet times of fellowship, the beautiful exchanges, the life that you so generously gave to us. And in your own time, you've called back home. I want to thank you for such a great gift. May your name only be praised. We gathered here tonight to remember 46 years of goodness through the life of Kojo. Now guide us, instruct us by your word, bring us wisdom. May we apply knowledge to our lives that your name be praised through us. We give you thanks. And all shall say, Amen. Well, the scripture says that it is better to be in the house of mourning than to be in the house of feasting. For death is the destiny of every man. So let the living observe and take note. Tell somebody by you and tell the person you are in the right place and you are doing the right thing. If you believe in that, put your hands together and give God praise. When we lose people who are very close to us, like Kojo is gone now, it's such a difficult time. And sometimes you want to ask yourself many questions. You want to find out why. And you never would have answers. But the Spirit of God has a way of comforting us. And sometimes he will give you an idea. And I found an answer recently. And it did comfort me. And I'm going to share that with Shimad. I found the answer in the barber shop. So I went to the barber a few weeks ago. And as the barber clipped my hair, I engaged him in a conversation. He was not a practicing believer. And he never believed in the church. But at least he acknowledged that there is a God somewhere. So as we had a discussion, some way, somehow, something came up. And the understanding I got was that the hair on my hair belongs to me. And I decide how I want to shape it. And I shape it in a way and a manner that will make me look nice and beautiful. And I have total control over the hair. So I can decide to let it be long or short. But as I do that, it's for my beauty and my glory. And sometimes that is how God relates to the people he loves. The sovereign God and his sovereignty makes him exercise absolute control over all of us as humans. And when he decides to call any one of us home, it's for his own glory. So I believe that Kojo is gone back to his maker for the glory of his maker. And I want us to put our hands together for God and thank him that he has deemed it fit to bring glory to his son Kojo and call him home. And for me who has recently also lost, lost a very loved one, he comforted me. That is for the glory of God. Kojo was a very, very nice person. He was a visionary. He was a man who could see farther than others. 
And that is why, because he's not here today, we feel he's lost. And the fact that we are here in our numbers is an indication that he did touch many lives. Before I even met Kojo in London as his pastor in May Avenue, I known Kojo way before then. And before podcasts and other things came and became very popular, Kojo already had his own form of podcast. And he will send inspirational quotes and send information and educate you on several topics in his own way. He was the kind of person who would influence you with his charisma. When you speak to Kojo, you want to take time and listen and think through every word he says because it's challenging and it's very deep. He was a man of extreme faith, strong faith. Kojo believed in God and Kojo believed everything is possible. His departure is really a difficult thing, but I believe God will grant us comfort. Hallelujah. I want to tell Shemat that Shemat, you will find grace to go. You will find grace to continue. God has a way. When He calls His own people for His glory, He knows that those of us here who are hurting and are missing the one He's called so much. He will send grace. And I want to tell you that the grace you enjoyed when Kojo was around has expired. You have entered into a new season of grace. And God will take care of you. God will take care of you and the children. A door has been opened for you because Kojo has departed. And you will be blessed. God will comfort you. The Spirit of God will overwhelm you. And you will smile again. In Jesus' name. I want to share with all of us gathered here a simple idea. I've chosen a scripture which I want to read to us. And I want us to think about our eternal future. Kojo is not here with us. And that is a reminder for all of us that we will all one day not be here. So we need to prepare for our eternal future. And I want to share a few thoughts with you along those lines. I've chosen a scripture from Matthew chapter 13, in the verse 44. Two scriptures. The first one reads, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden in a field, that which when a man has found, he hideth it, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he has, and buyeth that field. The next scripture is on Matthew 6, 20. But lay up not for yourself treasures in heaven, where moth and rust will corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Hallelujah. Life is an interesting thing. When we live lives, we don't want it to end. We want it to continue. But life definitely comes to an end at a point. And that is why we must observe and apply wisdom. These two scriptures gives us an idea of investment. An investment is when you want to put something aside for the future so that you will not be stranded or you will not be disappointed 
or you will not put yourself under too much stress in the future. So for instance, if you work for a company, they will take out your pension and put it somewhere for you so that in the future you can benefit from it. Some of us buy all kinds of investment uh, vehicles for our children so that when they grow, they will be able to have something that will guide them for the future. Hallelujah. And that is why we need to think about our future, not our future in this life, but our future beyond this life. If we can so much sacrifice for our future in this life, then we must know for sure that a time will come like this that would introduce us into our eternal future. And therefore, we must prepare for it. Three things we must note about this life. The first one is that this life is very short. Billy Graham was asked some time ago that what is the most amazing discovery he has made in life. And he said, the brevity of life. That this life is very short. The scripture says in James that life is like vapor. You see it today, tomorrow is no more. Hallelujah. So because life is so short, we need to do what we have to do before it runs out quickly. The next thing I want you to note about this life is that the life that we have is determined. It has a beginning and it has an end. So as long as it has started, it will definitely come to an end. Hallelujah. And therefore, we need to prepare and invest for the future beyond this life. You know, most of us go through all kinds of health regimes. We go through all kinds of exercises. We take all kinds of drugs, vitality drugs and vitamins. But at the end of the day, life definitely must come to an end. Hallelujah. So whatever you do, it will by all means terminate at a point. Can you hear me? So I want you to note that this life is determined. And you know the interesting thing about the determination? The interesting thing is that you have no control of the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. So whilst you have energy, prepare for it now. Make an investment that will take you to the hereafter. And that hereafter will be more beneficial to you. Hallelujah. The third thing I want us to note about this life is that this life is an opportunity. You have an opportunity to make an investment into the life hereafter. Anytime you have some huge sum of money, anytime you have anything that you feel is an extra, and you want to put it into an investment is an opportunity. But for us, as the clock ticks every second, we have an opportunity that is running out. And this life that we have is an opportunity to prepare for the next. Hallelujah. What you do in this life, as long as you have breath, will determine what the outcome of your future life will be in the hereafter. So let's take advantage of this life that we have and use it for our future well-being. Because definitely we are going to cross onto the next, into the next, next, next realm. Hallelujah. I want you to take note of a few things that will help us prepare. I'm not going to speak for long. I'm just going to share a few ideas, but I hope that at the end of my short exhortation, you will make a quality decision 
that will help you to make the transition. Praise the Lord. The opportunity you have gives you that open door to invest into your future. And no matter how long you are going to live, the day you have today, the day you have tomorrow, is something that you can use and it's worthwhile for you to put into your future and into secure your future. So let me share a few things with you that you can do that can help secure your future life. Praise the Lord. The first thing I want you to think about in trying to secure your future life is to be born again. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, get born again. For those of us who are believers, we are familiar with the word born again. And we've heard it several times. But these days, we don't even hear it anymore in our churches. There are many in churches today who are in church, they are familiar with the sound of church, they are familiar with the rhythm of church, they enjoy the worship, they even give their offerings, and sometimes they even come regularly to church, but they are not born again. The Bible says that except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says, there is no other name under the heavens by which men shall be saved except the name of Jesus. To be born again is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. So make sure that you are born again. If you are born again and you are sure you are born again, then you have anchored your future. You have invested your life into your future well-being. It is possible today to be in church and not be born again. So I want you to be sure that you are born again. Hallelujah. The next thing I want you to take note of by way of investing into your future well-being is to be like the Samaritan. Hallelujah. Be like the Samaritan. In Luke chapter 10, the scripture talks about a Samaritan. It talks about three groups of people who met somebody who has been attacked and was dying. He was lying down in a pool of blood and was dying. Now, there were three people who came across this person who was struggling and dying. The first person was a priest. The second person was a Levite. And the third person was the Samaritan. Hallelujah. Now, sometimes, those of us in church are the people who sometimes can ignore to be compassionate. Sometimes Christians are not the most nicest people to come across, particularly those in church. Hallelujah. But if you are going to prepare for your future and make an investment into your next life, then you have to be the Samaritan. You have to show compassion and love to others. And Kojo was such a person. First of all, Kojo was born again. And that is why I believe that the future of Kojo is secured. Hallelujah. I believe that we are not weeping and mourning as people who don't have hope. We are very confident that Kojo is in a better place. And we will all meet him one day. Hallelujah. A Samaritan is a person who is compassionate and who will show kindness, who has love for other people and loves humanity. Now I want to read a scripture, and I know you've all heard this scripture read before, but I want to read it again, and I want you to bring your minds to read. And I want you to meditate on it. I want you to meditate on it. In the book of Acts chapter 10, the Bible says there was a man called Dance or say anything to Smarten family, please let me know and then we'll take it from there.
Um, as I said, if you have anything for the family, please, um, there is a table at the entrance where you came through. I know a lot of people are standing there, but so please, there is a table. If you cannot get access to it, if you go on the website or in memory of kojoyanka.com, there is a place for you to be a blessing to the family. Mr. DJ, give me some music, please. to call on the old student, the primary school students from Prince of Peace, that is the old school for SMAT. They are here, they want to come over now. So all students of Prince of Peace primary or Prince of Peace International School, that is uh, the school SMAT went to the great school, international school in Canada. So please, if you can make your way here, old student of Prince of Peace, International school, and then you can say you have one minute to say a word, and then if you want to dance, please you just let me you know, and I will play a music a song for you to dance with your old colleague and old schoolmates. I just want to clear all this out as early as possible so we have time to really celebrate Kojo very well. So please, if you are being or if you have to do any talking or anything, please, if you gather yourself as early as possible for me because time is not on our side, please.
Ago. Um, we are Prince of Peace International School students. Uh, we've known ourselves since we were kids, right from primary school, um, class one through to um, junior high and we couldn't say that um, our own sister is not the husband and we wouldn't be here to support her. So we've come all the way to come and support she in this difficult moment. Since we just want you to know that we love you. Um, the rest of the crew are waiting for you in Ghana and we're going to show you our most love that we've not shown anybody yet in our group. And to hear what I say, I say, I share your door and your trail. But on Dr. Senan, I say, I bet you I walk on our year train also. And yes, receive your sympathy to the rest of the family and the kids. We don't know how you're doing this. I've seen you still posting on social media. And I'll be like, we know I'm more than free, you fine. But we pray that the Lord give you, give you this difficult moment and give you the strength that you need. Amen. Thanks very much. Mr. DG, please drop the truck.
kinds of difficult choices to have this. Thank you very, very much. Jubilee Church, please, you are next. Jubilee Church, please get ready. Jubilee Church, please get ready. You are next. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, DJ. Thanks very much, Prince of Peace International. God bless you for coming. Thank you. All right, Jubilee Church, you are next place if you will make your way to me now. Jubilee Church, if you are here, you are a member of Jubilee Church, please. Uh, we want you up here. As I said, we don't have a lot of time, so please, if you are a group, if you are an association, or if you are a pool, get big with me or your chill. Whatever you are, that's much as part of. And you want to come over, sing, to dance, to say something, words of encouragement, please. If you let me know, and I'll call you. So, Jubilee Church, are you ready, please? After Jubilee Church, I believe the MPP chairman is in. Am I right? Okay, so after Jubilee Church, MPP, the new patriotic party, will be next. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of Jubilee Church in Enfield. Um, we want to commiserate the family of um, Shimat. She's one of us. Um, and when Kojo comes over here, um, he worships with us. There isn't anything that we can say um, to make things easier for you. But the God that we serve will be with you. We pray that the God, the Lord we serve, will look after your family. Our God is the Father of the fatherless and the Father of widows. And he will hold your hands and be with you. He will surround you with his bubble. He will go before you, behind you, and just as for you was to you, the Lord will be that anymore. So tonight is fellowship with you. You know that you are one of us. Ask your son, go in pain, but also in pain. And we will always be there for you. Know that just as we been for you, we will always be there. And the Lord will be doing your father. And as you go to God, we pray that everything will go well and you come back safely to us in the name of Jesus. Amen.
very much Jibilisha. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. Bless you. Right, ladies and gentlemen, those standing at the door, please, uh, if you could move to this, I think there are a few empty seats there, just for health and safety reason, kindly come in and there are a few empty seats now, please, ladies and gentlemen, don't block the exit because of health and safety reason. Thank you very much once again, Julie Chen. God bless you for standing with our dear sister. Um, there is some friend here, the friends of Uganda, the friends of Uganda for smart, they want to come here, I was suggesting hello, they said they don't want to do the Ghana tradition, they can't dance, they just want to be acknowledged, so if you are part of the friends of Uganda for smart, smart has got a lot of friends cross country, cross nation, cross world, friends of Uganda, please, if you come here, you could take a picture with her, and then, if you have something to say, yeah, you can come and stand here. Don't worry, I'm trying to show you some Ghanaian tradition. So I'll get her to come up and you can take a picture with her. If you have something to say as well. Wow, you are a lot. That is beautiful. So who wants to be the leader? You take it. Our darling Shema. We love you so much. I've known you since I was 16 years old. And Robert at the same time, our oh, prayers for you. We hold you in prayer. We love you. We think of you. We all remember of his kindness and his ability to just light a room and you love just for inspiration or your love is. We're so sorry for your loss. We're thinking of you every day and we love you so much. Thank you very much, friends of Uganda. Wow, this is beautiful. The Afrin African sisters here to stand with, with a dear sister. Do you want to take a picture with her, please? If you just turn and let's take one picture. All right, can I call members of Christian Action Faith Ministry, please? So all the new Action Faith Ministry, if you could come up, please. Action Faith Ministry. Kojo Yanka is the only one who has a unique way of worshipping God. Kojo Yanka is the only one when you are going for communion, his hand is at the back of his wife. And he go like, Kojo, you're going communion, you suffer, you will eat it. Or say, Jamasem, or Yemalami Yerea. Kojo Yanka is very unique. If you have worship in action for all this year with him, you will see. Kojo Yanka does things that will blow your mind. People were sharing videos of him on the platform and it's so touchy. Kojo Yanka is the only one, let me see if I can demonstrate this. When it's time to worship, and you know how we worship and we raise our hands to God? Kojo does this, he raised one finger and then he doesn't raise his whole hand, I don't know why. Kojo Yanka will get to church 
when he used to teach in the biblical and foundation class, he gets to church by 8 o'clock. I get to church around the same time because I work in the technical team. And that is where Schmatz is coming to feed the children in the car at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I asked Schmatz that, ah, didn't you eat at home before coming? He said, hey, could you want to know? If you by 7, I don't by so where I saw one. That is it for you. And Kojo doesn't miss his praise and worship. Even if he's late and he gets stuck on traffic, as soon as he gets into the building and he's praise and worship, you see him dancing like this. I don't know why. He's got everything you make of him. He danced differently from everybody. He dances differently. So members of Action Chapel, both old and new, who have been with Kojo. When we are doing barbecue in church, and I'm busy standing behind the grill, cooking, Kojo goes past the queue, and then he comes and says, Mr. Kansi, if I'm not too far, I'm not going to go to the house. That is Kojo, he doesn't go with the queue. Mr. Kansi, I'm going to go to the house. Mr. Kansi, I'm going to go to the house. That is why you have this whole lot of people here. Action Chapel will go for you. You will never be disappointed when you are around Kujuyanka. Wow. God bless all of you. Some people I haven't seen for decades. But it is well, it is well. We thank God for being here to support our dear departed brother. Who wants to talk, please? Bishop Araba Beijing from the Melty Kings branch of Ashton Chapel. Hallelujah. It's a difficult time for us, but we thank God for the word of God which encourages us that our brother, our son is with the Lord. And Shemat, we just want to assure you that God has got your back. He's got the back of the family. His word is true. His word cannot be broken. He's the father and the husband to the widow. Amen. He's strengthened. He's strengthened. Okay. Kojo is such a character. I mean, if you look around, it explains the type of person he is. A very bubbly person. He's got a word for everything. He's full of jokes. I mean, he's one person that when you come into contact with, you can never ever forget about him. And it's a loss, but one thing is heaven has gained an angel. So we come to celebrate him today, we celebrate his life. A life well lived. And we thank God for the legacy he's left, the word, the love, and the assurance. Even as the children stood here, they even encouraged us. That tells us that he was a good person and he's left a good legacy. Hold on, forge on. God is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, family. We need to dance. Wow. Wow. Ashley Chapel, we are grateful to you. Kojo Yanka is grateful to you. Until you see your best friend is gone. Kojo Yanka will go and get more clothes. And run away with your feet you need. I will see you later. Not only for. It's only Kojo who goes and get plantain chips and then run away. Kojo is always worried until he's for plantain chips. Prime Minister. Be rich 
Can we invite a new patriotic party? A new patriotic party, Assem Kakra Party.
Mr. DJ, Sanya Bahunu, the new Patriotic Party, and our United Kingdom. Chairman, I'm going to be saying, no good didn't be, but I sent you a man also, said, I saw my chairman, a super, and team, with the microphone, and then the UK branch chairman, and Casa, and Wafa K, Miami Wafa Bakupe, and Wakasa. Chairman, Kukunu! Kukunu! Kukunu!
very much. All right, they want to do a donation thing. So if you do the donation, and then we will go continue the music based on. Um, Mr. Chairman wants to do a donation on behalf of. Um, The Council of Elders has just brought this Mr. DJ, drop the top of it. Thank you. Um, if you are the owner of this car registration, AA Alpha Alpha 04 Oscar Sierra Echo, it's a Mercedes Benz, please. Alpha Alpha 04 
Oscar Sarah Echo, please can you move your car before you get tickets? Thanks once again for the new part of the party. Can I please call upon the ICTC, International Central Gospel Church, please? ICTC, if you please hear, yeah, you can come. Members of the ICTC, which I believe was uh, the first church that could do fellowship in the UK. So if we have the members of the ICTC, please. Members of ICTC now available. All right, DJ. Let's get some music rolling. If you're ready, you'll come back to me.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, I have a quick announcement. I think uh, some cars are blocking the gates. Uh, Lima Sarah 18 Delta Yankee Mother. And then there is some uh, S for Sugar 15 N O K. Please, if it is your car, kindly go and move the car. They can access the gate, so you need to move your car ASAP. Thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to do some dancing, and we want to do some dancing in honor of Kojo Yanka. So as many of his friends that are here, Andy Martin, everybody, if you're a friend of Kujo, come on, Agabus, we want to do the butterfly dance, we want to do some dancing of Kujo. Anybody here, if you're a friend of Kujo, you know the unique dance of Kujo, we want to celebrate Kujo with that unique dance this evening. So if somebody could call Andy Martin, call me Agabus, and all the guys out there, let's come do it in honor and celebration of our dear brother Kojo. Once again, if you have any donation, please don't go home with your donation. Right at the entrance of the door on my right, there is a donation table there that you can put in your donation for the family. If you have any donation, please don't go home with it. DJ, if you're ready for me, please. Okay, it is dancing time, people. Come on, come on, dancing time. Let's come on the floor now. Special dedication to Kojo. We want to see all. Kojo's special dancing girls.